flows. Author speaks to the reader the preface. Why did I choose this title and subtitle Life, Love and Light? The author continues, Indeed, a book is a communication. The author writes something on basis of the understanding. So it is the communication as we understand between the seeker and the awakened one. This was a dialogue. So normally as we know when two people are speaking to one another on any matter, it is considered as communication. Indeed, it is the communication as we understand between a seeker and the awakened one. However, we cannot call this communication. Why the author says we cannot call it communication? The author has really understood the process that happens between a seeker and the awakened one. We cannot call this communication because it did not happen in a usual manner as we understand by the word communication. The author confirms. Sometimes I did not ask the question that arose within but I nourished the question or the inquiry within and suddenly one day got the answer from within. An awakened one creates a situation. The very purpose of education and communication is the answer should arise from deep within. And unless this process begins, the process of transformation does not happen. The process of learning can happen only when you create a situation for the person who is asking the question and the answer arises from deep within. This is the process of the process that we understand, we do not understand by the word adduce. Adduce is the verb out of which the word education comes in. That you know there is a well. From the well we draw water. We put the bucket, empty bucket into it and when it goes deep down inside the well and when afterwards it is pulled up, the bucket is full. When the empty bucket, full of your questions and inquiries, is put, is immersed deep within your innerness and when it comes up, surfaces, it is full of it is flowing, flowing with answers, responses, understandings. This is the normal process that happens between a seeker and a master. That is why we cannot call it communication. She says, at times I did not ask any question that arose within, but I nourished the question or the inquiry within and suddenly one day got the answer from within. Other times the question was a just gesture, difficult to understand and to decipher decipher the silence in the beginning 
as I was not used to this kind of association. However, for sure, I was growing in trust. And I felt this, I felt this too has some meaning in the process of inward journey. In the process of inward journey, trust is very important. Without that, the process of transformation does not begin. The purpose of the Master is not to feed you with answers. Instead, allow, fertilize the soil within as the gardener does. Gardener fertilizes the soil and by fertilizing the soil where the seed has been sown, seed has its own growth pattern. So too, each seeker, each individual is a seed of awakening, but it needs a fertilized soil. And in the silence that is deep within, the seed begins to blossom. And when the seed begins to blossom, its journey begins. And in that, it undergoes through the various stages, seed burst open, and then a sprout comes in, it is tender and soft. The gardener takes care of the seed, then it starts growing. This is how the seeker, the inner soil <coughs> within the seeker, it starts getting nourished and nurtured. So there are certain invisible forces and the energy field of the master nourishes and nurtures the seeker. The love, the energy that flows towards the seeker, something that the seeker has never experienced in any where during any process of relating, then the soil is being fertilized. As the soil is being fertilized and gets fertilized, process begins. Now the title, which is equally important to understand. Chaos refers to a state of inner indiscipline, a state of conflict, indecision, pain, suffering, anger, frustration, and tensions, a state of complete breakdown. Such is the state of schizophrenia. In psychology, this is the state when the two hemispheres of the brain are split and therefore become incapable to arrive at a decision. The mind remains divided between this or that. Cosmos, on the other hand, refers to the universe, the entire solar system, or the planetary system. No one is doing anything about it. No one is running it. Everything is happening in a rhythmic pattern, in a synergistic harmony. The sun, the moon, the stars, and the planets are moving in harmony with one another. Such is the state known as cosmos. This work bridges three stages of life. First, we are born. Life comes into existence through a process. The energy, when combines together the two poles, birth happens. With birth, the journey begins. We have to prepare ourselves for life, education, we have to prepare ourselves for life. Education, knowing, learning is the way to attain to wisdom. Awakening comes, still the journey continues. Then the last stage begins. The seed has blossomed into a flower, being manifests its illumination, the stage we call 
we know as enlightenment. Thereafter the journey is still continues. You are a light unto yourself. With this comes great responsibility. Buddha says, Apu Deepu Bhav, be a light unto yourself. This is the beginning from where it is like you have graduated from the university, you have gotten your degrees and now you can plunder into the outer world. This work began as the process of my journey of transformation. One day, Tao said to me, as normally happens, Nivedita, you should allow this journey to appear in a book form. Although this is your journey, but it will inspire many in their process of transformation. The questions you have asked are the questions of almost everyone. You had the courage to ask such questions. Most of the people nourish such questions within them and can never gather courage to ask such questions. For this gesture, humanity shall always remember, shall always remain grateful to you and I am also grateful to you. My blessings to you forever. Although it began as a personal dialogue for my transformation, what Tao taught me as well as parts of our communication are now becoming available in a published form for people and seekers in general. One day during our sessions, I asked Tao about the sessions and the contents I mentioned. People may misunderstand your message that you are overflowing on sex and such related topics. Are you not worried about their reactions? He told me, an awakened one is only concerned about transformation. An awakened one is only concerned about transformation and if he worries too much about people's reaction, then he has no right to carry the work of transformation of consciousness. Reaction may and will come from different corners. What he said is relevant and needs this explanation. Listening to these talks, you may think I am interested in sex or what kind of language I am using. If you think so, then really you have neither heard me nor understood me. I am indeed against sex. Like a gardener, I am planting the seed of sex in the mud of your existence so that the seed that you have so far known as sex may one day blossom into lotus of sex. This transformation, this is transformation neither through suppression nor condemnation can the lotus be grown. If you can transform the seed into beautiful lotus of awakening, your life will be a benediction. You are now the medium to bring light in someone else's dark life. You start rising, you are start risking your life for one in need. Your body and consciousness becomes a vehicle to take others on the right. Enough for now. <laughs>